In this session, let's learn how to create a database using DBCA. DBCA refers to Database Configuration Assistant. Okay, so let's execute the command xhost plus so that the DBCA graphical user interface is opened. Okay, so let's run that and now let me open a new terminal. Okay, now let me switch to Oracle user. Okay, now I am logged in as Oracle. So now let's check the disk space. Okay. Okay, we have good amount of space in disk 1 and disk 2. Okay, so that's good. So let me use disk 2. Okay. So now let me go to disk 2. Okay, and then let me create the directories necessary for the database creation. Let me create the folder prod1 which will be the name for our database. So now let's move to the directory prod1 cd prod1 okay and now let's create all the directory necessary for our database. So I'll be creating the directory data log archive flash recovery area control and diagnosis okay so I created that and then you see we created all those directories now let's move to Oracle home now let's start the database configuration assistant you can do that by issuing the command dbca it is launching the configuration assistant and now we can create the database so it's welcoming to the database configuration assistant click next and here we have multiple options we can either create a database or if you want to configure any database options we can use dbca or if you want to delete a database we can use dbca or if you want to manage the templates which are used to create the database you can use dbca okay now we are creating a database so we selected that option click next and here we are given the option of creating different type of database the first one is your general purpose or your transaction processing normally this is your OLTP database which is used to store your transactions custom database is something which you can create with different configurations with different block sizes and different parameters you can customize lot of options and data warehouse which you know which is used for OLAP purposes mostly whenever you are designing an analytical database that is when you select the data warehouse option okay so for right now we'll create the general purpose or transaction processing database so click next and then let's give a global database name so let's call this as prod1 okay next for right now uncheck this configure enterprise manager we'll configure it later okay I'm unchecking that and automatic maintain task this is saying like do you want me to perform my automatic maintenance task where I'll be collecting lot of statistics and providing the proactive advisor reports okay for right now you can keep this option on okay click next and then if you want to provide different passwords for this two administrator accounts you can do that if you want to provide the same administrative password so check this button and then I'm giving my password okay it says the password is not according to the standard of Oracle so obviously if you are working in a production environment make the password as complex as it is so that no one can hack it for right now I will continue and here the storage type is pretty important in organizations so the default one which is our file system but ASM this is an advanced feature of Oracle where Oracle will automatically manage the storage we will discuss about automatic storage management in a different session okay that's a big topic I'll explain in detail for right now let's go for file system and then click next so now let's mention the path for fast recovery area 
cell browse go to disk 2 prod 1 and here I'll select FRA okay so that's the size of the fast recovery area so that's good enough and then let's go next and if you want to create any sample schemas like human resources order entry online catalog you can select this right now we are not creating any sample schemas so you can ignore this next and here you can configure the memory options so here the total size for your shared global area and program global area is 393 MB so that's good enough obviously it depends upon the total memory you have for my machine that's good enough and um, let me go to sizing my block size is 8192 I'll go with that character set I'll use the default character set obviously if you want to use the Unicode you can use that and then if you want to use any other database character set you can change that and if you want to change your language to any other language obviously you can change that and you can change your territory okay and if you want to change any other initialization parameters obviously you can change them okay so we need to understand each one of these parameters to change them okay let's not change them now okay we will understand each one of them and then later on in the next sessions we will change them mostly they'll be helpful in tuning the database okay so I'm closing that and connection mode dedicated server mode that's good for right now okay looks good going next so here uh, let's mention the path for the control file data files and redo log files okay control file let's mention this 2 slash prod 1 slash control okay so let me copy that is the same here delete this okay and then data files so let me change that to data let me copy that so I'm just copying and pasting and you see there are totally five data files which are created system data file sys aux data file undo table space data file users data file and temporary data file if you want to create additional data files obviously you can create it later okay but these are the five default data files which are created whenever you create a database and now let's go to the redo log files and then mention log and then let me copy this mention the same thing here mention the same thing here okay and now let's click next so obviously we want to create a database so let's click finish and it is just giving us a summary of all the options which we selected if you want to save it just save it in a HTML file so that you can later on revisit and see what options you used to configure your database and this is important so let me save as an HTML file so it's saving under this folder okay so save and click OK and now the installation has started this will take at least 10 to 15 minutes for the database creation okay now it's creating and starting the Oracle instance so the database creation is complete it is saying the log files have been created at this location if you want to check your installation log go to this folder and check it okay and then let me exit now the database creation is completed so now let's close this window so now let's export the Oracle SID parameter and our database name is prod1 okay now let's connect to the database slash s sys 
DBA. Okay, we have successfully logged into the Prod1 database. Let's select the name of our database. Database. Okay, that's good. It's called Prod1. Let's see where our control files are stored. V$ dollar control file. Okay, they are stored on disk 2, prod 1, control folder. That's good. Let's see where our data files are stored. V$ dollar data file. So the data files are stored in disk 2, prod 1, data folder. That's good. We have successfully created the database.